<laughs> and it was meant to be a mild winter, so said the Met Office in October. So we're joined now by the head of the Met Office, John Hurst, in our Exeter studios. Uh, Mr. Hurst, you predicted a barbecue summer for 2009. We don't remember that. And a mild winter for this winter, which hasn't happened. Why did you get a massive performance-related bonus? <laughs> Good morning. Uh, well, let's put my bonus to, to one side for the moment and let's concentrate on uh, the fine job that the Med Office have done in forecasting the current weather situation. Uh, and we've given it, most people who operate emergency services and uh, local authorities and the like use our naught to five day forecasts, uh, which are amongst the best in the world. And that's what gives them the intelligence well, they need to keep people safe. Yes, but in October, season, you, in October you predicted a mild winter. Indeed. And you repeated that prediction again on November the 23rd, that it I would wish... be a mild winter. So, I, I, given that it's clearly not a mild winter by any standards, why are you getting a performance-related bonus? Well, whether I get a performance-related bonus for this year or not is something we have to see. Well, you got one last year. You're now paid more than the Prime Minister. <laughs> um, and so I don't, I don't I... quite understand given the Met's lamentable record at, uh, at forecasting on these matters, why your performance merits any bonus? Well, it's not a lamentable record at all. I mean, we have our short-term forecasting and our other forecasting well, is amongst the best in the world, and that's really? internationally and objectively recognised. Well, really? Well, let me ask you, you talk about short-term forecasts. How come I was able, on the 26th and the 27th of December, to learn from various North American forecasters that we were heading for one almighty freezing January, and yet on the Met website, I could find nothing that said that. Well, I think in December we started to talk about the short-term forecasts and the cold snap that was coming. I think but you know. didn't on the 26th, the 27th or the 28th of December. There was nothing on your website, and yet all over the American websites there were talk of a new Arctic Oscillation that had gone into negative territory, along with the North Atlantic Oscillation that had done the same. Take them together, it meant very cold weather throughout the Northern Hemisphere. Your Met Office reported nothing of that until it had happened. Uh, no, no, it didn't. It forecast it well in advance when? and in good time for our for forecast. When? Certainly at the end of December and yeah. at the beginning of January. Yes, but it had already let, happened let then, get, Mr Hurst. Let me get back to a, a, an important point here. I wish, as all people do, that our seasonal forecast was as good as our short-term forecast. Our short-term forecasts, as I say, are in, in amongst the best in the world and are outstanding, and people rely on them to protect right. life and limb in the country. Uh, and I think you sh we must not lose sight of that at all. All right. Can, in, but you've got previous on this, Mr Hurst. On January the 4th, 2007, the Met predicted that 2007, I quote from your press release, would likely be the warmest year on record globally, beating the current record set in 1998, which we all know was the El Nino year, where temperatures went up a massive amount. In April 2007, you were still predicting a sizzling summer. Your head of research said, quote, heat waves of the 2003 type will become common. In fact, the UK summer of 2007 was cooler than average and world temperatures dropped by as much in 2007 as the entire net temperature increase of the 20th century. How did you get that wrong? Well, you know, I have to say that 2007 was before my time and I therefore wasn't around when that, when that happened. But you got a performance-related bonus for 2008-2009. Well, the 2008-2009. And the performance-related bonus, if you really want to focus on that, is, is all do. to do with a whole series of forecasts and uh, business successes that we have. It's not just about a long-range forecast, which actually doesn't mm. figure in that overall thing because it's still a developmental science. Uh, and that's why when we do seasonal forecasts, we couch it in very okay. probabilistic terms and uh, let people know, for mostly professional right. users, that about the uncertainty. Let me ask you this, Mr Hurst. Since you can't get the summer or the winter right in your forecasts, why should we give any credence to your forecast for what the temperature will be in 2050 or 2020, which is what you do? Because it's a very different and a much more highly developed area of science. In fact, the short-term forecasts are outstanding, and we have a reputation as the leading geophysical science institute in the world, independently really? assessed, absolutely. Uh, and it's the bit in the middle which all scientists will tell you is the trickiest and so, which we're building our expertise into. So why didn't your very expensive models that we have paid for, uh, why didn't they predict or tell us that in the past decade average temperatures wouldn't rise at all? 
Well, they which did. is what they haven't since 1999. Average temperatures today uh, on 19, 1999 are the same as, as they are in 2009. They and have if not you, risen if, average at all. If you go Why back, not? if you go back, you will find that we predicted, in fact, a leveling off of the global temperatures. And what you've not got to do is confuse global temperatures with what's happening in the UK in January. Uh, I mean, it's a I'm completely not. different area. I'm onto a different and area. We, I'm asking why did. your models didn't predict that global they, temperatures would stop did. rising from 1999 onwards. They did. But they didn't. The anomaly, which is the difference from the zero, the anomaly in December 2009 was 0.28 uh, degrees Celsius, which is exactly the, the anomaly is, in December 1999. The same. This is, this no is rise. All, all to do with the national, natural variations in the climate. And that in particular was to do with the switch between El Nino and La Nina. And we did, at, uh, in the uh, late part of the 90s, expect that there would be a levelling off, just as we expect that in global temperatures, we expect there will be an increase over the next decade. All right. Mr Hurst, thanks. I'm glad you made it into Exeter. It doesn't look <laughs> too so either. Thanks for joining us. Hope you come back and see us. We have lots more questions.